neighborhood. Yeah. So I thought I'd uh, educate you guys a little bit about neuropathy. Mm, yeah. You guys know neuropathy? Yeah. Yes. Okay, never mind. I'm <laughs> done. <laughs> yeah, we're out of here. Let's go to the beach. Good. Okay. So uh, you probably heard us talk about neuropathy. If you haven't, I'll tell you what neuropathy is because it's a condition that is really, it really, really, really sucks. Does anybody here know somebody has neuropathy? I knew. Yeah. yeah. So it's it, it, it knew. Yeah. Okay. So it's one of the hardest things in healthcare to treat. Did you ever treat it? Try it. It, it is one <laughs> of the hardest things in healthcare to treat. So what it is is if you look at a, a person, you look at their body, right? I'm not a good artist. See how bad I do. Right. Right. Okay. They have a heart in the middle. And that's pumping blood out, and the further out it goes, the smaller the vessels get. Same thing with the brain. The brain is up here, and you got nerves coming out of it, and the further out it goes, the smaller they get. They just branch out everywhere. So the longest nerves in your body are where? Down to your feet. That's right. And the second longest nerves are? To your hands. That's right. So if you look at the anatomy of a nerve, I got two colors. Let me see what I can do. Here's a nerve, right? You got a nerve and it conducts what? Electricity. Electricity. So when you have electricity traveling on a wire, and if the wire is not coated, is that good or bad? Yeah. Bad. So what do you got to do? Coat it. So what coats a nerve? Myelin. Myelin. What's myelin made of? Oh. Fat. So basically what the nerve would really look like would be more like this. If you cut it away, it would be completely covered in myelin. And it needs nutrients to nurture the nerve. So you got blood vessels traveling on the nerves to actually bring nutrition to the nerves. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. see it up there. Um, so what happens is the farther away you get, the smaller the nerves get, the smaller the myelin sheath gets, and the smaller the blood vessel gets. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So these are called peripheral, meaning further away. The periphery, the outside, the outer part. So the peripheral nerves are pretty much at the ends of the bodies or the extremities. So what happens is there are diseases that cause your arteries to start to, start to harden and close up. Right? Mm -hmm. Peripheral artery disease is one of the terms for it. But a lot of things can cause it. Exposure to chemicals can cause hardening of the arteries. Do you understand that? Yeah. So like Agent Orange. Wow. In Vietnam, guys got exposed to that. Most of those guys now have peripheral artery disease. So if you look at an artery, and I'm going to get a little sidetracked here, but an artery has the ability to do what? Pump blood. And when it pumps blood, does it pump the same volume all the time? It's flexible. It's flexible. So it can get bigger and it can get smaller. It's called dilate and contract, right? Mm -hmm. So it's usually not blocked arteries that kill you. It's usually hardening of the arteries that kill you uh, yeah. because now it can't regulate the blood flow. Uh -huh. But they can close up. Yes, sir? Why is that free? An artery is a vessel that delivers blood. So like if you look and you see the veins there, yeah. that's the blood going back to the heart. But coming off of the heart, there are vessels that are taking fresh blood from the heart out to the body. So the way it works is you have a pump and then you have filters and you have your lungs, you breathe in air, air gets into your bloodstream. Get as, so mid cycle in the heart gets pumped to the lungs then it gets pumped out to the body. When you eat food, you have arteries that are picking up nutrients from your stomach and digestive system and now it's loaded with nutrients and oxygen and it's delivering it to everywhere in your body. Because every cell in your body needs fuel, it needs oxygen, and then it needs to have waste products taken away. So the arterial system is usually the good loaded blood, loaded with good stuff, and then the venous system is the return blood. And the venous system has to go through all your filters. It has to go through your liver and your kidneys, and it has to go through your lungs, and it has to clean itself up and put new oxygen in and new nutrients in. So you're constantly delivering supplies to different parts of your body. Does that make sense? So if you mess with that system, it's like cutting the supply lines to an army. They start to starve and problems start to happen. 
So if you start cutting off blood flow to say your finger, right? Say take a string and tie it around my finger real tight so that the blood can't get through, what would happen to my finger? Die. Eventually it would die, but along the way it would go through some painful things. It would start to starve. So if you mess with blood flow, you're going to mess with wherever that blood vessel goes. If you have interfered blood flow to your heart, you could have a heart attack because the heart's a muscle. If you have a blocked um, artery to an organ, the organ could cause a problem. If you have an arc, uh, blocked artery to an extremity, that extremity could die. Do you understand that? So if somebody has a decrease in blood flow, that means you don't cut it off, but you tie the string tight enough to slow it down, that, uh, that extremity is going to start to have problems as well. It's going to starve. It's going to get weaker. It's going to get smaller. And if it's cut off enough, it'll start to, to die and get gangrene, and you're in big trouble. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you don't want your arteries hard and you don't want them clogged. You want them being able to deliver blood because that's how you get all the oxygen and nutrients to your tissues to keep it going. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so when we start looking at the nervous system, and I'm gonna use this color for the nerves, you got the nerves down here, actually, yeah, I'll do that. You got the nerves down here in the extremities that are very, very small, so they have very, very tiny arteries. And they're more susceptible to things that would cause them to harden or to get blocked. So if you get blocked tiny little arteries going to your tiny little nerves, those nerves will start to die. Does that make sense? Yeah. And what do nerves do? What do nerves carry? What do they conduct? Same. Electricity, but, but it's in a message form. So like if I get the concept, I want to raise my foot, well, then I would have a signal go through my brain, my nervous system, down to my foot and says, lift those muscles. Mm -hmm. Got it? Contract certain muscles, don't contract the other ones, and I can now bend my foot and lift it off the floor. That's how you do everything. So you're com controlling your body through this system. If you start to interfere with that system and those nerves start to die, some of those signals won't get through. So what happens is pr um, neuropathy, peripheral neuropathy, starts slow. People start complaining, well, my feet are tingling all the time, or my hands are tingling all the time. And that's because some of the blood's getting through, but not enough, and the nerve is not conducting correctly. And then they'll start to say, now I can't feel, you know, I can't really feel stuff with my feet. And that means there's more blood getting cut off. Then they'll say, now I can't control my legs to keep my balance. So if you ask this person to close their eyes, when do most people close their eyes every day besides sleep? Shower. And what are they doing in the shower that makes them close their eyes? Washing their hair is the symptom that they complain about the most. When I go to wash my hair, I lose my balance in the shower. Right? So they start losing balance. They start losing the ability to keep your body controlled and balanced. Um, and then you stop sensing what you're touching. And then you stop sending the messages to repair. Because on that nerve is repairing the tissue. So what happens is the tissue in your feet start to die because they're not getting the right signal. Do you understand that? Yeah. And the end result of peripheral neuropathy is amputation. The person you knew had it, did that happen to them? No, but his foot got so dead that he couldn't feel that his uh, heater was burning a hole in his foot. Yeah, well, we've heard more than once stories of people saying, uh, I went to a barbecue and didn't realize I was standing in the fire. And when somebody said, your shoes are on fire, then they had a wound that wouldn't heal because they had no nerve signal to heal the tissue, and they ended up getting their foot amputated. Yeah. But what happens is, how do you fix something like that? You can't do it with adjustments, right? If the blood flow isn't getting to the nerve, you're Cairo, you can't fix it with adjustments. How do you fix something like that? Stem cells? Well, we tried stem cells and had some, some correction with it, but by itself it didn't work. Mm. Detox might stop. Detox might help, but exercise, exercise would help, but diet, 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 diet might help, but forced dilation. Force force dilation. How do you do forced dilation? I have no idea. I'm not a doctor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's on to something. So we realize you can't do it with one thing. You got to do it with multiple things. So we tried different ways to do neuropathy. And I, I'm telling you this because when I went up to my clinic this week, there was a lot of people that had neuropathy that were treating. 
and the most complicated thing to treat in healthcare, the hardest thing to treat in healthcare, and I start walking through the room, and I got about 10 of them in there. So how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing really good. I can feel my feet, and I don't lose my balance anymore. Wow. How are you doing? Oh, I'm same as him. I'm doing great, too. How are you doing? I'm doing great, too. How are you doing? I'm doing great, too. And then one of them said, and my vision got better. And they all started looking at each other like, that happened to me, too. Yeah, that happened to me, too. That happened to me, too. So would you like to know what we were doing? Yeah. <laughs> so think about this. You're talking about blood flow. Just think as a, a mechanic. Your heart's pumping, and it pumps blood out. Here's the heart. Does most of the blood go up or down? Down. 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 And how does it get back? Pumps. What The pump's up here. How does it get back up? Huh? Walking. Walking. Your, your venous system, which is different than the arterial system, you got arteries and veins. Your venous system is low pressure, and they have valves in them that when the blood goes through, the valve opens up, and then boom, closes. So what happens is you squeeze your muscles, you pump blood up, it gets trapped. Pump blood up, it gets trapped. Pump blood up, it gets trapped. That's how it gets back. Gravity plays a big part in how your blood system works. See, if it didn't flow back and hit those trap doors, it wouldn't work so well. Right? So, who do you think would have a problem with that? People who can't, can't exercise and move and walk, stand alive. People who sit at their desk all day. In a sedentary in front of their computer. How about, pe how about people at the <laughs> space station? Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. No gravity at all. No gravity. So, they go into outer space on the lunar mission, they're there for five days, and they come back, and great. But they go there for six months, and they started having problems with blood circulation yeah. because gravity is a big factor on that system working. Mm -hmm. So NASA started looking at it, saying, what can we do to, to fix this? And they came up with a thing called photobiomodulation, which means using light to stimulate arterial growth. So let me give you a little bit of education on arteries. When you have an artery, and it goes like this, and it's delivering a certain amount of blood to an area over time, as you get older, what happens is it starts to form collateral circulation. You get literal arteries that branch off, delivering blood to the same area a different way. What do you mean by collateral? Instead of the main artery, you got another artery going to the same place and starts to form. So, you just had a heart attack, right? Yep. How old are you? 66. 66. So, I'm 57. How old are you? LD. Oh, 84. 84. Who would have a better chance of surviving a better or, or sudden heart attack? Me or Doug or LD? You. LD. Oh, because he's collateral artery. Because he has 30 more years of collateral circulation than I do. 55 is the most dangerous time to have a heart attack. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Yeah. Can I skip 55? <laughs> uh <-oh. laughs> so, but we're on the other side of heart attack. Though. So what NASA figured out was that certain frequencies of light stimulate this. It's called angiogenesis. Angio meaning blood system and genesis meaning creation of. So certain light frequencies stimulate angiogenesis. So what we did is we learned that and we went, oh, well, we went on Amazon and saw they were selling lights for this and we bought them and they didn't work. <laughs> so then we found out it's the exact frequency. So you guys know uh, Dr. Bisboom? Yeah. One of the things they do, that was Vivian Rain, and they started a, a company or clinics that treat neuropathy. And they do the exact, they have their lights specially made to the exact frequency. They even found out that you can have the right frequency light bulb, and if you put it in epoxy, it changes the frequency. So they have to have it made a special way so the exact frequency gets through. And they made these socks that you can put on your feet, and they go up to about here with these lights. And you put them on. But we try that by itself and it doesn't work. <laughs> because when we get these people, they already have damage. It works a little, but not enough. So we said, well, we got to do more repair. So how do we do more repair? Well, we said, let's physically stimulate the nerves. So we use a machine, a uh, shockwave, that actually physically stimulates the nerves and artificially sends signals on the nerve. Then we use an electric machine called a Hakamed, which is like a TENS unit on steroids on steroids on steroids. So like if you got a TENS unit, you guys know what that is? Yeah. It's a little stimulation machine you can put on and it stimulates your muscles to stop back pain. Well, it's like 100 times stronger than that. 
So, and it has to be done in a doctor's office. So we hook this up to their feet and it does that. So we're stimulating the nerve. We're shaking the foot, stimulating the blood flow. We're using the light, stimulating new blood vessels. And then we inject them with stem cells. Oh. And what we do is we inject stem cells along the most common nerves that have the problem. So we do that on each foot. And then, and then what we're we do doing is we're giving them the lights because we say to them, you will never be cured of this. You will have to do this for the rest of your life. And we teach them how to use the lights. So when they're done, they get to keep the lights and they use them forever. They can take them with them. Because the nerves are dead? Well, because their arteries have this tendency of closing up and their arteries are compromised and the nerves are dead and we're just trying to stimulate this extra flow, chances are it's going to happen again. Yes. It would be like, like they're not going to be cured again because it's similar to like if you can't regrow your arm. Well, the most common cause of this is diabetes. It's not the only cause, but it's the most common cause. And unless you can cure their diabetes, they're going to have it. So you're catching most of these people that are well into diabetes. Well, they're not all diabetic. We had one guy who was a Vietnam vet who was Agent Orange. But people who get chemotherapy, people who get radiation, sometimes get neuropathy. Okay. So if you were to do this on somebody who had, say, just gotten diabetic or, or was pre-diabetic, would you be able to catch that? We're not treating the diabetes. We're treating the nerve. And the neuropathy is... And, 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 and that, See, they, if they had a way to cure the diabetes, they might be able to stop the cycle. Right. But we're not treating the diabetes. We're treating the nerve. Gotcha. Because what's ruining their life is, is what's happening to the nerves. Right. Do you understand that? Yeah. I mean, can you imagine if you lost all your balance and you lost your ability to sense the floor and then you started having damage to your feet and then you lost your feet? I mean, that's not much quality of life, right? right. That's how these people are. I mean, the, the stories we're hearing are like our, our case managers coming out of the room crying after they talk to these people, right? But now we got a bunch of people that we've been treating and pretty much 95% of them are saying, this is the only thing that ever worked. And they're getting like, so I'm in there yesterday and I meet this guy and his name's Paul. And they say, Dr. Carberry, this is Paul. And he wants to talk to you about his program. And this guy's a real Southern boy and he's older. He's like, I don't know, in his 70s. And he's going, let me just tell you, this has really been the, the greatest thing for me. He said, I was skeptical when I came in, but I decided to do it. So I got the treatment and they're doing all the electrical stimulation. I'm using lights and they do those stem cell injections. And he said, I'm telling you, the next day I woke up and I put my foot out of the floor and I was like, I can feel the carpet. No. The next day, I'm like, that's not possible. He's like, no, it is possible. So he said, so let me just show you. And I'm looking at his hand and his arm goes like, Literally like this, hold these. His right arm goes like this, comes up, goes, whoop, and his hand is over here. I'm looking at it, he goes, oh, and, and I had an injury with my hand. I said, what happened? He said, I broke my hand, and when they said it, they said it wrong. And what happened was, because it was wrong, I couldn't use these fingers, I couldn't use a mouse, I couldn't write, so I had to use the mouse left-handed, I can't cut my food, I can't do any of that stuff. The surgeon told me that they were going to bring me back in the spring and break my wrist and take bone chips from my hip and put it in my arm to try to get it realigned so I could use these muscles again. But he said, I came back in the clinic four weeks after I got the first treatment. I said, can you do stem cells just on my wrist? So they did. I've got full use of my hand now. I can use the mouse. I can sharpen a knife, which takes a lot of skill. If anybody ever sharpens a knife, you've got to hold it at an exact angle. He said, I can type. I can do everything. He said, and that's from this treatment. Plus, I don't get the pain in my feet anymore. I got balance. I can wash my hair in the shower without closing my so, eyes. Yeah. Was this helpful for you guys yes. to know this? Yeah. yeah. I just thought, you know, you hear these things, and I'm, a lot of doctors even don't know what neuropathy is. They just know that you don't get better from it. And you guys should know it because you're working with doctors all the time. <laughs>